Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This week, we're taking a look at the V8 Super Saloon from Mercedes as it takes on its hybrid rival from Porsche. We also have Volkswagen's latest EV, the ID5. Is it a match for the Kia EV6? We also take a look at the Bentley Bentayga S and the facelifted Skoda Kodiak. Plus Ford's wild new Bronco Raptor. That's all coming up, but first, the news. Twenty twenty one was the worst year for UK car production since the nineteen fifties. Last year, Britain built just under eight hundred and sixty thousand new cars, the smallest number since nineteen fifty six. The figure represents a drop of 6.7% compared with 2020 and a whopping 34% with 2019. The pandemic has, of course, continued to play its part, but the main factor in the reduced production is likely the global shortage of semiconductor chips. Another factor is the closure of Honda's Swindon plant following a decline in European sales. It isn't all doom and gloom, though. A record number of EVs and hybrids were produced, accounting for more than a quarter of all cars built. Following on from its success with the ID3 and ID4 EVs, Volkswagen is back with its newest EV and it's called, you guessed it, the ID5. From the outside, you'd be forgiven for thinking the ID5 and ID4 are the same model. In fact, aside from the coupe shape at the rear end and slightly reworked bumpers, the design is pretty much unchanged, though that's far from being a problem. The intense work to make this coupe SUV as aerodynamic and efficient as possible is clear from almost any angle. The streamlined design makes for beautifully clean curves flowing from front to rear. They're accentuated even further by the creases that run down the length of the doors. From the front, the ID5's design is brought in line with other modern VW creations thanks to a bar of daytime running lights. A large face, unflatteringly large wheels and a fairly low ride height for its class make for quite the chunky design. In true EV style, the ID5's interior is nice and spacious thanks to the flat floor. There's plenty of legroom throughout, although space in the rear is hit ever so slightly by the shallower roofline. Taking center place on the dashboard is a large, high-resolution infotainment screen using an updated version of VW's ID software. Alongside new voice control and ambient lighting features, this new system brings a better navigation system. Using We Connect, it can find real-time information on traffic, routes and all important charging stations. Speaking of charging, it's probably time to address the biggest talking point of any electric car. The ID5 will manage an impressive 320 miles on a single charge, according to WLTP figures. Just like its stablemates in the ID camp, the 5 uses the MEB platform with its so-called modular electric drive matrix. It allows you to easily add or remove electric motors, giving three different versions. The entry-level ID5 Pro and mid-range Pro performance variants send power to the rear wheels and produce 174 and 204 brake horsepower respectively. It's the sporty GTX, though, that tops the ID5 tree. The GTX introduces an extra motor on the front axle of the ID5, giving it all-wheel drive while the power figures have been increased to 299 horsepower. All this is enough to help it reach 60 from a standstill in 6.3 seconds. Not rapid in EV terms, but not bad for a family SUV. Starting-wise, the GTX gets a few tweaks to help it stand out. 
The front end's oddly large lower grille has gone through reduction surgery, while the rear end gets a sporty rear wing. But if the ID5 wants top honours in this class, it'll need to beat this, the remarkable Kia EV6. Arguably more driver focused, top of the range cars get 321 brake horsepower with drive centre all four wheels. 0 to 62 miles per hour is dealt with in just 5.2 seconds, which ought to be enough to worry even the hottest of hatchbacks. If outright pace isn't such a priority, there is a cheaper rear wheel drive version. It gains a couple of seconds in the 0 to 60 sprint but its 114 miles per hour remains the same. In the UK, both versions get the same 77.4 kilowatt battery, with the less powerful 226 brake horsepower single motor car getting the greater range at 328 miles, 14 more than the top spec car can manage. Kia is on top of its game lately, and the EV6 is a great example of just how far the Korean brand has come in the last two decades. Both the Volkswagen and the Kia are fine electric cars, but this time it's the Kia that gets our vote. Since its launch back in 2016, the Bentley Bentayga has been rather a divisive luxury SUV. Sitting somewhere in between the Range Rover and the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, it's won favour among those who appreciate bold modern styling mixed with classic British luxury. And now joining the lineup, there is a new version, the sporty Bentayga S. Based on the existing V8-powered car rather than the full-fat W12, the S is aimed at Bentayga customers who enjoy driving their two-ton SUVs in a somewhat more spirited manner than most. As a result, the air suspension is now 15% stiffer in sport mode and the traction control has been tweaked as well. Bentley says this has reduced body roll and improved turn-in, while the steering feel has also been improved with recalibrated torque vectoring. Under the bonnet though, the turbocharged V8 remains unchanged, still producing 542 brake horsepower. 0 to 62 miles per hour takes four and a half seconds, with a top speed of 180. To mark out the S from regular Bentaygas, it gets some aggressive looking sporty add-ons, including a bigger rear spoiler, some new 22-inch alloy wheels, and a new louder exhaust system poking out from the rear diffuser. Much of the chrome has been blacked out too, as have the front grills and head and tail light surrounds. Inside, there are some changes as well, with some sports seats trimmed in Alcantara and plenty of S logos dotted around. It isn't exactly a game changer then, but the new Bentayga S is a welcome addition to the range that now has more competition than ever. With performance SUVs like the Audi RS Q8 and Range Rover Sport SVR nipping at its heels, the Bentayga remains top of the pile. Having become one of the most popular 4x4s on the market with long waiting lists and used market markups, Ford has given its popular new Bronco even more appeal. Designed to go over any type of terrain you dare to point it at, Ford Performance has given the Bronco Raptor all the bells and whistles of an Ultra 4 off-road racing truck. In fact, when driving around with its doors removed, it even looks like one of the monsters built to take on near vertical cliffs. Allowing the Bronco to take on the most challenging of surfaces is a set of modifications brought in by Ford Performance. 
from race ready axles taken from the Baja Racing variant to trick suspension developed in collaboration with Fox. Hiding under the Raptor's bulging bonnet is a 3 litre twin turbo EcoBoost V6 capable of producing a dune smashing 400 horsepower. The 10 speed automatic box with high and low range ratios and massive off road tyres help put all of that power onto the road or dirt. The elephant in the room though is the wild styling. Not exactly a shrinking violet, the Bronco Raptor's performance is plain to see straight away. Reworked bumper design and the wider track increase the car's width by nearly 10 inches over the standard car. If all that isn't enough to differentiate it from its less powerful sibling, the Raptor branding will surely do the trick. Despite on paper looking more like a dune buggy, the Raptor version of the Bronco still comes with some creature comforts. The middle of the dashboard is dominated by a 12 inch infotainment touchscreen. Carbon fibre accents decorate the steering wheel and gear lever, and you can even get it with an optional Bang & Olufsen sound system. The Ford Bronco Raptor will be on sale this March, with deliveries starting this summer. After the break, a trio of family SUVs and a V8 Merc with a trick up its sleeve. Coming up, the new Mercedes AMG GT, but first... The Skoda Kodiak has always been a likeable car. It's a practical, fuss-free, affordable family bus with just enough creature comforts to keep it competitive against its VW Group stablemates, the Tiguan Allspace and the Seat Turaco. And now Skoda has given its seven-seat SUV a midlife facelift. It's nothing drastic, just a bit of nip and tuck, but it does look smarter than the old one, with an updated grille, new headlights and a redesigned bonnet. At the back, the changes are similarly effective, with a new spoiler and fresh taillights really marking it apart from the old car. And it isn't just the aesthetics that have been upgraded. Under the bonnet, the Kodiak now gets a new range of engines. There are two diesel options to choose from, both 2 litres in capacity, with either 148 or 197 brake horsepower. The petrol lineup consists of a 148 horsepower 1.5, a 187 horsepower 2 litre, and the sporty top of the range VRS model gets a 242 brake horsepower turbocharged 2 litre. In VRS form, the Kodiak will hit 62 miles per hour from a standstill in 6.5 seconds, topping out at 144. Most buyers, though, will be looking at one of the lower trim levels. The range kicks off with the £30,000 SE Drive model with either five or seven seats. Better equipped SEL Sportline and LK models all come with a third row of seats as standard. Step up to the VRS, though, and you'll be forking out more than 46 grand. Step inside and you're greeted by a pleasantly finished, well-built interior. SE cars are a little basic, but step up to the sport line and you'll find most of the kit that you're likely to want. If you want some real luxury though, the LK model is the one to go for. It comes with ventilated electric leather seats, a 360 degree camera and a digital instrument display. So what else is on offer for those after a seven-seat SUV? This is the latest Hyundai Santa Fe. It's big, bold, and sure to turn a few heads. A facelift of the previous generation, this new car is certainly a head-turner. We've been pretty vocal about our opinions of other manufacturers' big grills in the past, but this time we have to say, we rather like it. 
After all, this is a big car, and apart from the new hydrogen Nexo, the most expensive Hyundai you can buy here in Europe, with prices starting at over £40,000. That may seem pricey compared to entry-level Kodiaks, but it's on par with the higher spec versions. It's roomy inside and, like the Skoda, has seating for seven. If that price is putting you off, though, the Skoda's Spanish stablemate is worth considering. The Seat Taraco starts at under £31,000 and is available with a wide range of trim levels. It comes with the same range of engines as the Skoda, minus the powerful VRS motor. They're very similar on paper then, but the Seat does offer a bit more style. It's a good-looking car with a slightly more premium image than the Skoda. On balance, however, it seems to us that it's Skoda that's got it just right. It's slightly cheaper and with a more diverse selection of trim levels thanks to the luxurious LK and the sporty VRS. If it's a VW Group 7 seater you're after, a Kodiak is your best bet. It's fair to say that there's no shortage of big, powerful AMG saloons these days. The E63 is still the go-to super saloon, while the latest CLS is one of the prettiest cars in the Mercedes range. And then there is this, the AMG GT four-door. More expensive than the other two and not as nice to look at, it's always rather understandably been quite a rare sight on the roads. Now, though, Afalta Back is looking to change that with a comprehensive update. There have been some minor updates to the six-cylinder car, but the flagship V8 has had a thorough reworking. At first glance, though, not a great deal seems to have changed. It still looks pretty much the same as it always has, bar some updated badges and externally fluted exhaust pipes. Even the engine is the same, AMG's famous turbocharged 4-litre V8 producing 630 horsepower. However, look closely and you'll spot a few worrying details. There's a badge on the side that says E-Performance, and there's some sort of flap on the rear bumper that looks as if it could be hiding a charging point. Could it be? Has AMG made a hybrid? The answer is yes. The Mercedes AMG GT 63 SE Performance, to give it its full title, is a plug-in hybrid. The small 6.1 kilowatt per hour battery is quick to charge and can provide up to seven and a half miles of electric only driving. It also means that the big thirsty V8 Merc can now achieve more than 32 miles per gallon. But this new e-performance version of the GT four-door is not really about fuel economy. You see, the electric motor has another benefit. At full power, it produces an extra 201 bhp, meaning you get a combined total of 831. As a result, this big saloon car can do 0 to 62 in 2.9 seconds, topping out at just shy of 200 miles per hour. What we have here then is a fast, green, practical four-door family car that just happens to be the most powerful road-going Mercedes ever made. Believe it or not though, AMG isn't alone in the class. Enter the Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid. Like the Merc, it has a snappy name and a plug-in hybrid system. Like the Mercedes, it uses a turbocharged 4-litre V8, but this time it's hooked up to a bigger battery. As a result, the Panamera can drive much further on electric power, up to 31 miles, while economy is up massively to 97 mpg. However, it can't match the Merc on power. 
690 brake horsepower is impressive though, and it'll hit 62 miles per hour from rest in 3.2 seconds, providing you've specced the optional Sport Chrono Pack. It isn't the best looking car in the world, but neither is the Merc, and there is an estate version available called the Sport Turismo. Inside though, you're in for a real treat. The Panamera has a fantastic cabin. It's well trimmed and spacious, not to mention more tasteful than the shiny carbon clad cockpit of the Mercedes. If you're a fan of the V8 Super Saloon formula, but don't want the PHEV setup, both of these cars are available without them. They're not quite as quick, but they are lighter. For the ultimate in four-door speed though, a plug-in hybrid is what you need. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we test a new car that isn't really new, the fabulous Lada Neva.